Hey guys, welcome back. So over the next couple days, we're gonna do a video about the lovely Chandler Grove carburetors. They lasted a whole year and a half on Packard starting in 37. And as we go through this, you'll find out why they were abandoned. All right, so we have the Chandler Grove off the car. I am going to be taking this and retiring this as much as I love this. And if you go ask the guys on Packard Info, they'll tell you. Uh, Chandler grows if you like them you're crazy the replacement in 1937 to 1941 on the Packard six-cylinder motors was this right here this is a WA1 these are vastly better in design um, for a thousand reasons I won't get into that to go back to Chandler Grove the reason why these things went out so early is when they originally released them into the Packard thermostatic choke in 37. Um, I believe these ran actually until early 38 before they were completely nixed. They gave you the original carburetor and that wasn't good enough. So Packard said, oh, you guys got to fix this. Chandler Grove made a revision in the carburetor, which was more for altitude. And it fixed some of the metering problems that ran a little better. Well, after they came out with the second revision, there was other problems that cropped up, like the choke linkage that runs internally inside. They came with a third revision. By that time, Packard was pretty much done with the Chandler Grove carburetors. Um, if you can find a rebuild kit for one of these, and this you find out yours has suffered all three revisions, as this one actually has, you will need not one rebuild kit, but you'll need a rebuild kit and the two supplementary kits, which to the best of my internet searching, and talking to some other Packard people, they are obsolete and you cannot get them. So this goes away and a lot of people go over to a WA-1. This is, this one here specifically is a WA-1 477S. This was, like I said, used from 37 to 41 as a replacement carb for these. The change in these carburetors is you have to add the ball for the linkage. You have the same port for your advancement, but you have a different port style for your climate control choke. And let me take you back over the car and show you the difference between these. Okay, so as I said, it's different thermostatic chokes. So on the Chandler Grove, it picks up its heat from the intake manifold through this little port. But when you swap over, or when the dealer swapped you over to the, w, <laughs> the WA-1, this obviously is in a different place. So when it mounts down, you have a bigger issue. So their fix for this was, is you go back to a standard base gasket. There is a little metal cap that sits over the top of this. It doesn't fix down, it just sits there. So when you bolt the carburetor to it, you put in the little metal cap fitting and the little metal cap fitting has a foot that tightens down on the back nut. And that has a fitting for your temp tube and your temp tube slinks around the back and connects to this. Here we go back at the bench you've seen the difference how the thermostatic choke picks up its heat how this one is different how they've explained that they made a little cap so I'm unable to find pictures the guys at Packard Info which if you have a Packard and you need any information hit them on the web there's a ton of them out there and they know more than I think most people could ever want to know about Packards. But even the best resources sometimes come up empty. We've not been able to find literature or a picture of the conversion kit. So I'm going to try to construct a cap, fabricate, and we'll see if we get close. And hopefully somebody will turn up with a picture one day. But preparing for that, since we are stuck in the land of only having modern things, I've changed this piece of brass out to accepts a brake line, and I will use the brake line to 
snake around the back of this. I'll bend it down to where our heat hole is in the intake. And like I said, we'll fabricate a cap or something similar to the factory retrofit kit. And once I get that done in a day or two, we'll come back and shoot some video and we'll see actually how this works. And then we'll get into tuning this carburetor. Okay, here we are, day two, same shirt, yeah. Anyways, today we have the carburetor on. I have it semi-dialed in. We'll put a picture in. You can see the heat tube design I tried last night. It opens the choke, it's just incredibly slow. After asking around the forum some more and getting an email or two back, if you come take a look, we've changed the choke now. So the choke tube actually now runs down and just sits on top of the exhaust manifold, which is enough to get it to open in a timely manner. So you have a good warm up, the choke comes off and you have good drivability. Did a little tuning on it. The carburetor was on a shelf since the mid fifties. It needs a rebuild, but yet it's tuned in pretty good and the car's warm. So hopefully this will actually start within two or three turns. So there you go, a conversion from a Chandler Grove to a WA1 Carter carburetor. Remember, this is the 477S model. This is the replacement carburetor for the Chandler Groves from 1937 to 1941. It was tough, there was a couple tricks. Um, if you guys have questions about the install or anything about it, drop it in the comments. I'll try to get to them or I'll try to help you out. Beyond that, thank you for stopping by my channel and I look forward to seeing you guys again.